Hello and welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you were watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I've got some news coming out here for you that we've got more countries that are willing to send their troops to Ukraine. Now, the first time we heard this was from uh, Emmanuel Macron, the French president, stating that if Ukraine were to start to lose this war or if the front line were to break, that they would send their troops to Ukraine to help Ukraine fight. Well, now we've got uh, the Baltic states and also Poland considering deploying their troops to Ukraine if Russia starts to succeed in their ongoing offensive here on the eastern side of Ukraine. So the Baltic states include uh, Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, and then we have Poland, of course. So this is huge because uh, this goes to show right here that more countries are becoming concerned with this war in Ukraine. And especially, I'll show you on a map here, if you're not familiar with where some of these countries are located at, they are right on the border with Russia and also Belarus. So if Ukraine were to fall, uh, these countries would be up next in line if Russia decided to continue forward and, and maybe attack a NATO nation. Um, and even if they didn't, if war were to break out between NATO and uh, these Baltic states or Poland, uh, they, you know, they'd be right in the line of fire where all the war would be happening at. Uh, it'd be right in their backyard. So they're obviously concerned about this war expanding and Russia potentially succeeding or maybe breaking through the front line. And who knows, maybe Ukraine could collapse and maybe they can't fight this war anymore. We've been hearing lots of reports that uh, Ukraine is struggling. They've said many times that their front line is uh, significantly deteriorating in certain areas. Um, and I, I believe there was just some news coming out today, too, that Russia took another village or two two other villages, actually, I think, in the Donetsk region. So Russia is slowly advancing in Ukraine, and they have been for the last two years. It's obviously been incremental gains and nothing extreme, um, sometimes extreme, but for the most part, not too much. But slowly, Russia is advancing forward, and I think these Baltic nations and Poland, and I'm sure many other countries in Europe are starting to become uh, afraid here that it's very big possibility that Ukraine could fall. So I've got some information we're going to go over here. I'm also going to show you on a map again, like I said, uh, where these countries are located and why they might be concerned about this. So let's talk about this is on RBC Ukraine. It says Baltic states and Poland may deploy troops to Ukraine if Russia succeeds, media says. So the Baltic states and Poland do not rule out sending their troops to Ukraine if Russia succeeds on the battlefield, reports German media. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but Der Spiegel or Der Spiegel, I'm not sure. According to, to uh, Spiegel, Baltic MPs warned representatives of the German government about the consequences of Berlin's policy towards the Ukraine war on the sidelines of the Lenart Mary Conference on Foreign and Security Policy, which took place in the Estonian capital last week. Germany refuses to provide the Ukrainian army with long range weapons and prohibits the Ukrainian armed forces from striking Russian territory with Western weapons. So uh, this is something they were bringing up a lot at this conference, was Germany refusing to send their Taurus missiles to Ukraine. Ukraine's been asking for them. These are very powerful um, cruise missiles that Ukraine could be using right now, but Germany's been refusing to give them these long-range weapons for a very long time now. Um, and they, they, don't want, uh, they don't want Ukraine to be using these to potentially, you know, spark a, a wider war, maybe against uh, Germany. They don't want Russia to have any, any, uh, you know, any crazy reaction towards uh, Germany as well. So they haven't been sending them. So these Baltic states are worried about this. That there's many countries, including the U.S., that are making it difficult for Ukraine to fight this war. Which is why there's lots of talk about Ukraine right now being able to strike inside of Russian territory. I've talked a lot about that lately. Um, and that seems to be a highlight of topics right now when it comes to the war in Ukraine. So it says they argue that if the Russians manage to make a strategic breakthrough in eastern Ukraine, because the West is only half-heartedly helping Kiev, situation could escalate dramatically. In that case, the Baltic states and Poland would not wait for Russian troops to deploy on their borders, Baltic politicians warned, but would send troops to Ukraine themselves. Look at that. And it was clear that uh, what this would mean, NATO would become a party to the war, the article says. So they're not willing to wait for Russia to end up on their doorstep, okay? So in other words, they will not let Ukraine fall. So if you see how dangerous the situation is, it doesn't matter whether you're for Russia or you're for the West. It really does not matter. The, the part that I'm talking about here that's dangerous 
is that there's so many countries on, you know, whether it's Russia or the West that are not willing to let Ukraine fall or not, you know, let Ukraine win either, either way, whichever side you stand for. And, uh, you know, th this is basically going to drag NATO into this conflict if uh, if Ukraine is unable to hold up this war on their own. Yes, they can get all kinds of weaponry that they want, but let's say they don't have enough troops. Let's say that at some point they run out of troops and they just can't hold the line anymore. Russia is able to build up their forces large enough to where they can overwhelm uh, the Ukrainian forces, and that could happen. And then if that does, that's when we'll see these countries like the Baltic nations or Poland or uh, maybe France or whoever – maybe feel like they need to step in and uh, take over for Ukraine to prevent Russia from taking over Ukraine. So as Spiegel, uh, Spiegel explains, this is exactly the scenario that German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and U.S. President Joe Biden fear. Those who want to limit the war through excessive restraint actually risk getting it out of control, the media says. And then it says right here, French President Emmanuel Macron was the first to voice the possibility of sending Western troops to Ukraine but Macron's idea was supported only by the Baltic states and Poland, while the rest of NATO countries, including Germany, criticized the French leader's statement. Most likely, the, the reason why the Baltics and Poland were willing to you know, support this idea of sending troops to Ukraine is because it's in their interest to protect their country. If France were to, to come and support Ukraine, this would also support uh, these Baltic nations and Poland, considering they're right on the border of, uh, of Russia and Belarus. Recently, the New York Times reported that NATO was discussing the possibility of sending military instructors to Ukraine to train soldiers. Currently, NATO troops are training Ukrainian soldiers abroad. Zelensky also voiced the idea of deploying NATO instructors to Ukraine. He explained that this could speed up the training of Ukrainian military as they, uh, they would have not been sent to Poland, Germany, or Britain. So that's a big one, too. I just heard about this recently. I think it was in Lithuania. There was like a top military commander, or it could have been like a, a, a military police officer. I can't remember who it was, but somebody came out in, in like a, a top level meeting over there in Lithuania and stating that uh, they were willing to start sending their troops to Ukraine right now, like very soon, to start training Ukrainian soldiers on their own territory. So that way they don't have to waste time transferring them over there and then training them and then sending them back. That's how you know that this war over here is, is very, very tight. And uh, it's it's difficult for Ukraine right now that they're not doing well and they need as much support and assistance they can get. Um, obviously, like I said, we've been hearing a lot about this, that Ukraine is not doing well in this war, um, but, but neither is Russia. OK, Russia is definitely um, suffering as well. And we're starting to see signs of that also. Uh, there was uh, Vladimir Putin who just visited Beijing and China recently trying to, to look for support towards China, uh, considering their war is not going very well. So. Uh, you know, there's definitely signs on both sides that uh, there's beginning to be cracks in the seals here. And uh, at some point, something could pop. And when that does, you know, one side may not be able to hold up this war anymore. anymore and we could see a major escalation, uh, whether it come from Russia or Ukraine or the West. Um, and, uh, you know, again, this is just more signs that uh, there's about to be a major inflection point here that I've been talking about in this war in Ukraine. Something's about to change here pretty soon. And uh, I think there, we're going to see some major escalation because there's a lot of countries that are starting to get worried about having to deploy their troops to Ukraine, um, you know, in, in this in this whole effort in case Russia, Russia is able to succeed and start taking more territory. So I don't know. Let me know what you think down below, though. I just wanted to get this out there to you. That's going to be it for this update. If you got something out of this update, please smash that like button. And also, if you enjoy my content. Please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you. And with that, I hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless. And we'll see you in the next one.